Boom. We are here. And I'm... Uh, it's fuck you Thursday. <laughs> it is, man. It is fuck you Thursday. You know, man, oh man. I'm fired up. I'm keyed up. Let's go, boy. Man, oh man, oh man. I am... I've gotten into it with two friends this week. I don't think they're my fault entirely, but I take personal responsibility. And you know what? If I get into it with more than one person, if there's an issue that I'm finding that isn't isolated, I got to take a look at what's going on. Am I, am I being a sort of way? Am I being some sort of way? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, but it's interesting. It's interesting. Should we talk about how I got there? Should we talk about some of the the, the things that have gotten us in this situation? So, first one. Uh, there are rules with friends, right? And family. There are rules with, rules with friends and family. Um, one of the rules is... Uh, don't disrespect your friends and family in front of strangers. Don't fight in front of strangers with your girl, with your kids. Don't, you know, keep it together because you ha- you're, you're a team, you're a collective. So you, and you know, this is, goes into another thing and I fucked up this rule. When one, when your friend or family disrespects you in front of another person who's not within that friend group or in that family, they believe it's okay to disrespect you subconsciously. They're not thinking about it, but they're like, oh, this, their best friend just said, fuck you and told all their business in public and, you know, publicized this sensitive part of them. So now it's like, oh, so I could fuck with him. Or, you know, in my case, I know I'm held at a different standard. People don't understand what I'm saying. But I'm the only black person. So there's a subconscious, like, thing, whether you want to say it or not. And it's easy for you to not, to say it's not a thing if you're not black. It's easy to be like, no, you're tripping, dude. But I'm not. I'm not. We understand that as soon as we walk in the room, there is a different, oh, like, okay. There's a thing. There's like, oh, okay. When white people walk in the room with other white people, they're not like, oh, all right. And there's not a thing. But for us, there's a thing. And for us, we're not expected to be certain ways in certain spaces. So in business, I feel it. Because there's lots of black, millions of black business owners, depending on what demographic you're in. And if you're in Atlanta, you see tons of black business owners, and they're crushing it tight. And there's a lot of, there may be mixed race, uh, there may be like social gatherings where it's mixed. The circles that I'm in, I'm the only one. And I've thought about starting a black networking group in San Diego, but it's not the same. It's not the same. The caliber of, of professionalism, in my experience, the people who, the circles that I'm within, and then the other black professionals who are a certain caliber, they don't want to be in a black networking group because they understand the same thing. So it's interesting. It's in, it is interesting. And then we could talk about why were they not at the same caliber? Do they have the same resources? Did they grow up seeing what business is run, how businesses run, do their friends run businesses or are their friends not doing good or are their friends, you know, so is it, who do they have to bounce these ideas off of? Fortunately for me, I have a group of business owners around me who I can run ideas across, I'm not by myself, not thinking, I'm not thinking within my own demographic. And that is so important to me that, you know, other things, you know, other people, and this goes into my next point. You know other people, you think other things, you hear and spend time with people who don't think like you. That's cultured. That's being cultured. That's saying I'm familiar with lots of different people and lots of different cultures. I can still be myself. I'm not, I'm not, 
what's the word, Com being a chameleon and bending and folding myself into certain spaces, but to understand how to read a room and how to, you know, navigate all cultures, all ethnic backgrounds, all sexual orientations, everybody, I can be around anyone. And I'm still going to be myself, which may be ignorant and it may be like kind of ratchet. That's fine. But I can, I'm still respected in those spaces. That is very important to me. Um, but my point was that, you know, when black people walk in the room, there's a thing in San Diego, particularly because in New York City and Atlanta and probably Florida, um, there is a huge, you know, population of black professionals. San Diego is not, but you got to think of the demographics. San Diego is only 0.3% or 3% African American. So, you know, and the socioeconomic uh, and wealth distribution and uh, the racial biases that affect social uh, socioeconomy, oh, well, that's not the best way to put it. But there's circumstances as to why Southeast San Diego is not doing good and resources aren't funneled there. Education is not prioritized there. There's a lot of things that go into that. Um, so there's not a ton of black professionals. There's less white people. The higher you go in, in your professional life. Jay-Z said that. And Jay-Z is a billionaire. He said the higher you go, the less black faces. It's interesting. It's an interesting thing. Um... Oh, I forgot my original point. Oh, man, oh, man. Um, so I've been, I've been, so a friend of mine made, uh, was playing me and making fun of, like, and here's the thing, I'm held at a different standard, not only because of my ethnicity, but I'm a decent looking guy. I'm a big guy, 6'3". I'm 260. I have muscles. So first of all, if me at 6'3", 260, muscles, and, you know, in the, me being who I am, if I make fun of, if I punch down, you know what I mean? If I make, if I body shame someone or, you know, vision, you know, about their aesthetics, you're ugly, you're, or you're poor, or you dress like shit or like things that you, if you make fun of those, those things, the way, or body shame, you know, make fun of their socioeconomic status or their looks. I, people look at me like I'm a piece of shit. People are like, you are you know, punching down, punching down. So what I don't do is I don't insult people. I may, me and my friends, we talk shit. Everyone's talking shit, dude. Everyone is doing it. You know, we're doing it. But the point is I can't publicly shame someone, but people can make fun of you need to wear bigger clothes. No, you know, I have muscles. I'm, I'm big. If I wear a 3X shirt, I look even bigger. So that's why this look, these clothes give me a slimmer look. You don't know that because you dress like shit. You, don't, you dress like shit because you don't have enough money to dress well. That's fucked up. That is so fucked up to say. That is so fucked up. To say. I would never say that to somebody. I would say, you don't know what clothes look good because... You're fat. Your body looks like shit. So you couldn't fit in these clothes. That is so mean. I would never say that. I wouldn't even think, it. you know, with Benny, the only thing I make fun of uh, to Benny is his weight. And I do it. But you know what? Benny doesn't care about his weight. He doesn't care. If he did care, he would do something about it. He doesn't care. And, he, you know, he just it's not his thing. So I can make fun of it because it's but he, like I said, will pick out things, not all the, all the time. Sometimes he just breaks my balls, but sometimes he'll pick out a thing that is sensitive to me, which is, you know, <laughs> but in this situation, you know, someone made fun of me in front of strangers about things I'm insecure about. And I'm not going to say the mean thing. I'm not going to say the mean thing because that's punching down. That is not okay, especially with your friends. Don't do that. Do not do that. I did that once to my sister, and my mom was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? If you do that, to her, do that to her, other people will think it's okay to do to her. And that was when I was six, and I remember that, and I'm 30. I remember that, so don't do that. In front of your family, don't, don't disrespect your wife or your children in front of strangers. Don't insult them. Nothing's, nothing's worse when you see a husband and wife where the husband insults or talks crazy to the wife in front of everybody. It's like, oh, it's terrible. It's terrible. Um, 
So yeah, I got I got into that. And of course, I make amends because I allowed, it's my fault that I allowed this person to affect me. That's the responsibility I take. Other people wouldn't take that responsibility, but that's the responsibility I take. I allowed this person to negatively affect my psyche. So I made amends to them. That was, that was wrong of me to give you that much power. That's the kind of, that's what I do because I want peace. I want peace. And then the the very next day, a friend of mine was, uh, is moving to LA. She's very attractive. She's very attractive. I would move to L.A. if I was an attractive girl, too, because you can be attractive for a living in L.A. If you're a young lady. I know so many of those people who are just hot for a living and have sponsorships on social media and YouTube channels, makeup tutorials, workout videos because they're hot. And I know that this per- that's the joke would be that that's why this person is moving to L.A. Maybe it is. Who the fuck am I to say so? And then guess what I did? hypocrite i did it in front of strangers i didn't think it through but maybe she was sensitive about it maybe she kind of knows you know that's but that's not my place to even fucking ponder you know but i did exactly what i don't like to people uh to her you know so that's two days in a row i've gotten into conflict two days in a row i got into conflict so man that makes me when i get when i'm having a rough time in that regard i have to take a look at what's going what's going on with me this is where i talk about consciousness this is where i talk about being self-aware this is where i talk about personal responsibility this is where i'm talking about because if if you are interfacing with the world and having difficulty interfacing if there's conflict there's drama within your within your interface with the world around you the people around you the places around you if you're discontent then you have to look at you it's not the world it's not the world the world is the world people are people why are you allowing people to to shift you know your psyche why are you allowing allowing the world to shift your psyche for me that i used to have a very weak mind and i still do that's why i don't like this i don't want to be so affected by everything and you know what i'm a happy ass motherfucker so usually i'm not Usually I'm not. I can always look at the bright side. Besides, with my girl, she has a ver- she has the button. My son has the button too. My little my kids have the button, and my girl has the button. But that's normal. I think most parents and kids and partners they each have each other's buttons. But in the interface in the world around me, within you know twelve step within my work life, generally I'm very positive and have very you know you know clean interactions. So when I'm not having those clean interactions, I got to ask myself, what am I doing? Because like I said, a couple, like 10 podcasts ago, um, I was a very abrasive person. And now I'm particularly aware of that. So what's going on with me? What do I need? What do I need? What's going on? You know what I do know? My meditation has been slack and rare. Your boy slack. And you know what? You know why? Because I was in a one bedroom, like one bedroom kind of studio ish, but more one bedroom. But there's no door. So like my apartment in San Diego is very small, which it's only me there half the time. So more than half the time, 60, 70 percent of the time, it's just me. And it just doesn't make sense to have a big apartment, right? Um, so, but we went to San Diego to escape the heat, was there with my kids, didn't have a chance to meditate because my Son was on a sick one, bruh. So I didn't have time to meditate. So I didn't meditate Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Tried to meditate. Oh, no, Monday meditated well. Tuesday, tried. Wednesday, tried. I had to break it up into pieces. And that's discipline, bro. If you can't do it, break it up and you do it. I did eight minutes. Then I did six minutes. Then I did seven minutes. Got it in. It's a practice, but I know I wasn't keeping my spiritual game tight. I wasn't keeping my wellness and my mindfulness game tight this weekend. And guess what? Conflict Monday and Tuesday. Uh, not a fucking coincidence. I have a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of my spiritual condition. And, and anger is the luxury, dubious luxury of normal men. 
me in my condition, I don't have the option to be angry all the time and to be in conflict all the time. And I don't have the option or the space or the bandwidth to to be to be uh, not taking care of my quote unquote spiritual life. Remove the spiritual aspects, remove the metaphysics um, and just think I'm not taking care of my stress management. So Monday and Tuesday, I'm getting stressed and I'm interfacing with the world destructively. Not entirely. The world didn't end. But there's pieces that are chaotic and I don't like it. Clean it up. Sweep it up. What am I doing wrong? Sweep. You know. But then, you know, it gets annoying when you make amends to everybody. They think they're right. There was kids who were so racist to me as a kid. They were, they were every fourth thing they said to me was nigger this or did, did it was just so aggressive. I made amends to them. You know, but I wanted peace. I didn't want to think about it anymore. I still think about it, but I didn't want to carry it anymore. So I made amends to them. But, you know, in my head, I can see, I feel like I conceded and I let them be right. They were like, oh, I feel like that there's, there's racial, there's social and racial implications in me bending over. But it's a matter of peace. It's a matter of me cleaning up, cleaning up messes that even if other people did it to me, let me clean up this mess so I don't have to carry it anymore. But they get to think, oh fucking dummy it's a frustrating one it's a frustrating one and it's frustrating that people don't think to make amends to me because hey dude you fucked up you fucked me over you were a piece of shit you were not a good person you were not a good friend good friends wouldn't say this or maybe we weren't friends at all that's what i think we weren't friends at all we just hung out together because friends don't i have friends now and friends don't fucking jesse would never say certain things Never, because he's my friend. You know, me and Benny. There's things that we say to each, to, to each other. We fuck with each other, but there's certain things he would never say publicly, because he knows. Because he knows, and you know that's that's what friends are like. And I I'm lucky to have real friends. But yeah, but I don't have to carry those burdens anymore. Thank God. I don't have to carry that and I don't have to like give them all that power. You know, I don't have to give them all that power. So, you know, but and and I talked about this 10, po- no, more than 10, 20 podcasts ago. My need to be right. You know, I do. I'm one of those people who wants to be right, especially because I've been wrong so many times. <laughs> you know, sometimes can I be right once? Can I be right once? And and. Because I take so much responsibility for the things that happen in the world around me, um, it feels like I'm never right. So that, that's attachment, though. Oh, I'm dropping bars right now. That need to be right is attachment. And the goal is to not have attachments to really anything besides my family. Even having attachments to your family is, can be a liability. But it's a liability worth risking. Bars. Ooh, let's go. Let's fucking go, boy. That's bars right there. But you don't put your security in things that can be taken from you. Being right is fleeting. You know, it's ego. Ego. My ego wants me to be attached to bullshit around me, be attached to my clothes, be attached to my job, this podcast. But yes, you have to be attached to things. But then if thing, if those circumstances change, do you fall apart? That's why there's this joke, bodybuilders, fitness people, now that the gym is closed, now that you can't bodybuild anymore, who the fuck are you? You have a personality? Do you have a, who, can you, you know, can you keep yourself busy with intellect? Some, some of them very well can. I know lots of them that who can. I know lots of people who have maintained uh, and grown in this time, fitness people. So I'm not saying all, but there's some people who like are, shake, you know, crawling in their skin who can't identify as anything else in this time but what if you break your legs or you know and and what if you lose your job if you're attached to your job or you know what if you get divorced what if but that's why love you take you risk it all you risk which is scary for me i didn't do that for a number of years in this relationship i didn't i wasn't willing to risk it all. i always had a backup plan always had a contingency always had always had a way out but that, but for an addict and alcoholic to be able to pack your life up and run is like that security to me. 
to be able to wipe my hands of things, people are in dis- are disposable. Ooh, that's fucked up, isn't it? But when you when all your friends are dying and all your friends are leaving you and when all that's happening and all the relationships you had are gone and new ones and new ones, you know, when that's happening, then it's hard to, you know, it's hard to find security in people. Anxious attachment style. Did I talk about that last week? I don't remember. But that's anxious attachment style. Man. I looked at the camera just now so I can, so the congregation can give me an amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm dropping bars today. Mm. But yeah, let's move on. I just talked about that for a number of minutes. Number of minutes. Um. Oh, I so I wrote I wrote something down and I wanted to talk about this. Um. You know, there's some people. A lot of okay. A lot of people have a doom and gloom mentality of the world, right? They have the end times is coming, you know, Donald Trump is being attacked and, you know, with this election, it's very, it's like do or die, life or death. That's a privilege to be concerned with that. And this is deep, okay? So for black people, we have progressed dramatically for humans we have progressed this is the best time in life to be a human ever unequivocally less things can kill you because i tell people all the time if we're in the jungle right now so many of you would be dead myself included i wear glasses my glasses fall off i'm fucked you know but if this was the jungle Fucking bears and wolves would be eating your asshole. They eat you alive, by the way. They don't kill you. They don't like tigers and stuff. They eat your neck. But so many animals, they eat your asshole first and your stomach first. So they're not even crushing your head or your heart. They eat you alive. So these monsters will be eating you alive. There'd be rival neighborhoods. The Quinta would be fighting Indio. So this is the best time. So we don't have that. Then racially, we had in this country, we had a number of years, almost, we had 400 years of of slavery, then Reconstruction, then Jim Crow, then civil rights, then the crack epidemic of the 80s. Now, we're at a place where I can do this podcast and people are like, oh, we could do this 10 years ago, but now this is the best time to be black. The best time. And for, there's, you know, of course, we got to fight for oppression, fight systems of oppression. That is part of what blackness is to me. But this is still the best time to be a black person. So those doom and gloom people, they're just, you just don't have a perspective. You just had it so good for so long that you don't understand that this is the best time to be a human ever. More freedom to move about the world, car, plane, train, boat, however the fuck you want to get anywhere. Freedom of information. Hey, I have an iPad, I have a MacBook, and I have a cell phone. Anywhere I go in the world, I can look up anything, anything. Butt plugs. Where do I get butt plug? I can get a butt plug from Amazon. Send it over. I can buy a rubber fist. People put rubber fists in their body. I can buy one today. May take a long time, but it'll come to my fucking house. What? I can look up how to say, eat my butt in Japanese right now. And then I'll get it to say it to me. Uh, What? What? Best time to be alive, bruh. Freedom of information, freedom to move about the world, freedom to date who you want, be friends with who you want. Yes, there are biases, there are difficulties. But walking around with biracial children, not a problem. Not a problem. Someone in my family was uh, was adopted, and, their, and the person who adopted them gave them back because they started to look too black. That was, she's still alive, by the way. She's 70. So, best time to be alive. More economic opportunity. You can go from making 30000 to 50000 to 100000 to a million. You can do that today in this country. I can record this podcast, record this, put this information on the internet within 10 minutes of recording this. More freedom than ever. 
it's a privilege so it's a privilege to think that times are more difficult now make america great again this is the greatest time in the history of the world and you don't have you haven't had enough strife to understand that you haven't had enough resistance to understand that this is the best time to be a fucking person i don't give a fuck what you say i know it's it's not my opinion not my opinion and they didn't even have deodorant they didn't have deodorant you stinky motherfuckers i would that's when i see old like images or old like you know reenactments i think oh how bad they used to stink like everybody's balls and asshole it's disgusting and they didn't have toilet paper wiping with their hand or like some cloth random cloth that they would use over and over again and wash and not getting good wipes now you got a bidet bro you can get at, you can get your water you can get water sprayed in your butthole today for not even that expensive you can put one of those in your fucking house more freedom than ever in human history it's the best time and it's and it gets better it gets better and you know some people are scared of Techno technological innovation because the more technology you get the more technology you're going to get because technology and innovation begets an innovation you create a stronger microscope that microscope makes it so you can look deeper into gen into genetics looking deeper into genetics makes it so you can so you can extrapolate and and you know change genetics it's just like what the fuck now you can, you're unlocking pieces you're unlocking pieces it's going to be in your body sooner than i think than we think but that's i'm okay with it that's where we're going you can't stop it you can't stop it there was a concert in Fortnite. i can't break down how that happened but there was so so many people navigate this reality they there's a whole language my kid to said talk this whole language there's a whole language that Fortnite uses and that gamers use and now within the game they're going to a concert within the game what the fuck what that's you're in an, it's augmented reality it's a simulation with we're already in a simulation so it's a simulation within a simulation what <sighs> my brain's gonna explode my brain's gonna explode it's crazy it's crazy and i'm too i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about this is a crazy person i don't know what i'm talking about i have a 10th grade education <laughs> i have a 10th grade education but I have great parents, and this is how they spoke to me with this language um, and this tone. So now this is how I talk. And I listened to a lot of podcasts and read a lot as a kid. Anyway, time to move on. And I'm going to finish up with this. Um, okay, story time. Quick story, maybe not that interesting. I eat, I'm in a sandwich phase. Take my time. When you make a sand, when you make food and it looks good, it tastes better. That's why you eat out. When you eat out, not that it's partic some restaurants, not that it's particularly good, but it, someone brought it to you, made that plate look nice. That's nice and it's the perfect temperature, hot, but you can eat it within a couple minutes. You pay them, they give you refills. You get every they're they're serving you. So we can't get that right now. That's fine. Some I, you know sometimes. It's actually, it's best. It saved us money, especially in this time, because I eat out a ton. In the beginning of this quarantine, I ate out every day. So now we're making food at home, but I'm in a, I'm in a sandwich phase. I'm in a sandwich phase. So what I'm doing is taking in the toaster oven, toast that artisan sour bread. Boom, 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 boom. Ba, ra, ra, ra. Toast that artisan sour bread. Put that real mayo or that avocado oil mayo lightly. Lightly toast it with that so the, the bread toasts with it, toast with the mayo on it. Take a pepper jack or a, or a, a baby Swiss, layer it thin, get that get that cut slice, uh, thin, bro, thin sliced. So it's just a, the right amount of cheese. Get an oven roasted turkey and a, a, a uncured ham, clean, 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 thinly sliced. Stack it real nice. Put some butter lettuce, some fresh tomato. Some spicy mustard. It's on that. It's sourdough. So you know the shape. It's like flat on one side and rounder on the other side. Like a half circle. Then you cut it diagonally with a sharp knife. So it cuts like, so it cuts smooth. Cut it. Go in the fridge. Pull out some, some organic tomato soup. Put it on the stove. Stir it real slow. 
Let that bitch simmer, son. Let it simmer. Put it in a nice bowl. So, oh, clean off all the crumbs off the plate that you're going to eat off. Put that nice bowl on the side of the plate. So you got a sandwich and soup in a sandwich. Dip the motherfucking sandwich in the soup. Yeah, bruh. Yo. Yo, this shit sounds fire, doesn't it? Shit sounds fire. So dip it. Eat it. Then sip the, then sip the soup. It's filling. It's filling. You put a good amount of turkey and, and protein on there. Six ounces. So it's a big sandwich. You got 50 grams of carbs in the bread. You got 35 grams of protein. You got the avocado oil, so there's some so there's some fats there. Spicy mustard, no calories. Get the butter, lettuce, or a spinach, or a kale, or um, spring mix, or mixed greens, whatever. Put that on the salad, then your tomato, no calories, no calories, bum, bum, bum. Got your roughage, got that soup. You don't, I don't sweeten the soup. Got that creamy tomato, those a little fat in there, a little fat and low carbs in there. That's okay. It's okay. But you, I really only put a little bit of soup in the bowl because most of it's for dipping and the rest of it's like little bits for sipping. But I like to dip that, you know, dip my sandwich in tomato soup. All the flavors combined. Okay, enough of the sandwich. The point is, I made my oldest one of these sandwiches. He usually eats salsito turkey. I don't particularly like it. It's very seasoned. It's like... A different meal. It's not like turkey. It's like a, it's like a different thing. So he got a bunch of salsito. Well, I got a bunch of salsito this morning. Went to the grocery store, got oven roasted jerky. That base. That's basic. Oven roasted jerky. If you give it to ninety nine percent of people, ninety seven will be okay with oven roasted jerky. So I, I gave it to my kid. I didn't tell him it was oven roasted because I know him. And I was going to say, eat, if he ate the whole sandwich, hey, dude, that's oven roasted, bro. Look, I, you know, I knew you, you know, try it out. He's, then he starts asking little questions about the turkey. Is this the same turkey that I usually eat? Yeah, man. Is it good? Uh, it's good. It's just a little different. Not bad. All right, man. Eat the sandwich. And now he's taking smaller and smaller bites. Smaller and smaller bites. Okay, taking small bites. All right, um, I cut him a piece of cheesecake. I got a, I got some some freshly made cheesecake when I picked up the the sandwich meat. Brought him a, I cut it, cut a slice for him, hella clean with that sharp ass knife. Put it in a bowl for him. Boom! After you eat your sandwich, you can have a piece of this. Nibble, small nibble. Then I said, you know what, bro? I see you. I see what you're doing. Don't need it. Blah blah blah. So. On principle, on principle, I got super annoyed. Didn't sc- I'm not, I didn't scream, but I definitely ranted. Let me tell you why I ranted. I said to him, does it taste bad? Does it taste bad? Answer yes or no. Does that taste bad? He said, no. I said, does it just taste different than the thing you're used to? He said, yeah, it's not bad. It's just different. That thinking, oh, let me breathe, is infuriating. And no, no part of life where is that okay? That's not okay. That's not that's. So if I said to someone, that per, I that Asian person, they're not bad. They're not bad. They're just different. And I just don't want it. You know, just don't want it. What? You know where? Oh, this that class isn't hard. I do. I can do fine in it, but it's just not what I'm used to. No one gives a fuck, bro. Tolerate things, try things, get used to different things. So it's on principle that made me so mad and I ranted. Honestly, I'm a ranter. Obviously, I'm talking right now. Look at this. I'm ranting right now to no one. It's loud. I'm sorry. I drink some water. Um, I'm a ranter, so I ranted at him. And then I said, you know what? Don't eat it. It's the principles. Principles get me. Obviously, I talk about principles all over this podcast. Everything I talk about is philosophy and principles. That's like very important to me. And like, I like to live my life within a paradigm. I like to live my life compartmentalizing and with belief systems. Like, these go here and my thoughts go there. So that was very annoying. That was very annoying. But you know what? I'm over it now. 
And I'm going to apologize to him for ranting. It's the principles. The principles. Another thing I did when, regarding my son, I, on my, I share my schedule, my calendar with my family. So I scheduled, now that he's homeschooling, and this is, we've had him loosely doing it. He has Zoom calls and Google Classroom. He's doing all that remotely, which is okay. Not good enough. So we are making, I made him a schedule schedule, a full schedule. So, you know, he's going to learn hey, out of bed this time, make that bed in the shower, pop, 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 predictable. Life is already chaotic. Life is already chaotic. You, you can't control most things. I don't have the bandwidth. Uh, I, even if I could, I don't have the bandwidth. I'm doing too many things. I'm thinking about too many things. So life is chaotic. So you control what you can control. You put yourself, you safely put yourself in box, in a box safely. Not it doesn't sound good, but you safely create parameters, a schedule and you function within that schedule. And then when things come at you in that schedule, you can still, okay, in an hour, I have this thing to be doing instead of having it open-ended. That's the way. And you know, a little bit of that is obsessive and OCD, which is fine. I'm okay with that. That's not something I'm trying to battle. I am perfectly fine with it. I like it. I still, you know, I like, that's fine. But for him, that's, tr that's discipline. So many times when people talk about disciplining children, people think we're talking about beating kids. <laughs> you don't beat, he, you know, how, and how old is a kid when you beat him? You can't, it doesn't work. Hey, I got a little one and we don't beat the shit. Obviously that's not what we're talking about. When we talk about capital, when we talk about spank, we talk about spanking. He has a diaper on, bro. We're not, he doesn't get any marks on him. It's just a pop. And people have been popping their kids for a long time. And there's people who beat the shit out of the kids. You can't do that. I just pop my son's butt. But I'll tell you this, it doesn't work anymore. It works to the point where he's intimidated and is like, oh shit, I could get popped. But what's working better is incentives and consequences. Consequences are, when take your iPad, consequences are, uh, you don't get the snack. Incent incentive is, you get the snack. You get to pick your Play-Doh. You get to pick out these underwear or this headband with your character on it. That's working better. That's working better. But anyway, I forgot my fucking point. Whatever, I've been talking too long anyway. Uh, so let me leave you with some words. If, well, look, hold on really quick. That's another conflict I got in. Three conflicts this week. Oh my God. What, what's going on? What is going I need to meditate today. Can't fuck around. It's starting to, you know, you know, fucking up. Um, with that being said, though, I want to leave you with some, some words, be introspective, take a look at if things are happening, if there's pay, patterns being created in your life, take a look at where they're coming, where they're coming from. Why? What do you need? What needs, maybe you need to be milked. Maybe you need to bust a nut. Maybe, maybe you need some intimacy. Maybe you need some rest. Maybe you need to meditate and to manage your stress. Maybe you're hungry. Maybe you have tr a baggage or trauma or resentment you're not thinking about that's making it so your interface is not clear and present. I don't talk about being present that much. I'm a little deeper than that, son. I'm a little deeper, baby. <laughs> that's so good. That's so lame. That's so lame. That's so fucking lame. I can't believe I said that, but I'm not going to cut it out. What's, what's good? It's embarrassing. But whatever. It's at the end of the podcast. Most people won't listen this far. Um, but yeah, if you if you are if there is an issue with the way you're functioning within space and time, take a look at what you need. Maybe it's a need you need to, that needs to be met, or maybe it's a it's a want. Maybe it's an attachment to a thing. It's a lot. It's a lot. It could be, but take a look at it because you're creating a pattern, um, and you don't want you want to break pat negative patterns, right? Before they become in, ingrained. But that's looking at your subconscious. Jesse been talking about it. Benny's been talking about it. It's just the goddamn topic right now. You know? But anyway, that's it. We out. Uh, one.